Turn with me to Matthew chapter 9. I want to give a few more examples of uh, <coughs> Jesus not trying to capitalize on official glory, though that won't be our primary uh, emphasis um, for this one. Hey, Deb, where's, uh, oh, it's not a, I was hoping to have that jump drive. Never mind. Um, <clears throat> Matthew, uh, chapter 9 and verse 20. And behold, a woman who had been diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. <clears throat> but Jesus turned about, and he saw her and said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the musicians and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in. He took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And, and the fame of this went abroad into all the land, all that land. <clears throat> all right. Two examples here. One is that Jesus <clears throat> is simply walking along. He's simply on his way, actually, to help someone who asked for his help. This ruler had his daughter <clears throat> who was uh, sick or dead. I guess she might have been dead here. <clears throat> and and, uh, and on the way, this woman with the issue of blood came up behind him and no no, no problem. And uh, and she said within herself, and what I want you to get from that is she put Jesus in a certain category. And that category was healer. Okay? She didn't say, you're Lord and you can save me. She didn't say, you know, any, anything along those lines. She didn't say, I'm a disciple. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And she didn't express that outwardly. She just touched him. <clears throat> but here's my point. This is how she related to Jesus. Um, is, let me just ask you this. Is that official glory or glory of nature? Glory of nature, absolutely. Because official glory would be, you know, if... if you know, she honored him and had everybody come over and, you know, whatever. <clears throat> but it was glory of nature because she believed that, that Jesus would meet her need. And um, so she touched him and um, Jesus said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath, has made thee whole. <clears throat> the faith here... Yes, it was specific to healing, but I want you to see that the faith that she had in Jesus was to Jesus in a specific way. And Jesus responded according to how they related to him. All right. So then he moved on and he goes into this house and it says, Jesus said, uh, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. So yes, she was dead. The maid is not dead, but sleepeth. All right. And what was the reaction? Well, they laughed him to scorn. All right. 
So what does Jesus do? Jesus has been invited, not by all these people here, but by the Father. Uh, and the Father was a certain ruler. Okay? <clears throat> so they laugh him to scorn, but notice this, but when the people were put forth, he went in. Now that's very specific. That is incredibly specific. That Jesus did not walk into the middle of people who didn't hold him in this regard and try to convince them or try to sway them or try to, he waited till they were out. And in another version of this, Matthew, I mean in Luke or some, somewhere like that, it says that just the parents were in there with him and they sent for him. And when it was just them and their faith in him on whatever level, and in this case, this isn't healing, this is raising the dead, Jesus met them where they, the, put it like this, the place that they gave him, Jesus met him in that place. He didn't push forward, he didn't say, this isn't right, you know, you, you know, that lady right outside the door there had an issue of blood 12 years and all she wanted was healing for her flesh. And I come in here and all you want is your son raised from the dead, but I am Lord or I am the son of God or I am the Messiah or I am... Isn't it funny that Jesus did say I am, but he didn't say I am all this stuff in that, that, in that way. He didn't say it to make himself something. He even said that to make himself something unto us. That he would be those things to us, not just to make himself outward official glory, but rather by union be those things. That's the, that was the way that Jesus... <clears throat> approached all those things. So here, uh, and, and when the people were put forth, he went in. Now, he's relating to the people uh, as, as the place that they gave him. But if he related as t according to the people that were in there when he first came in, he wouldn't do anything because they laughed him to scorn. Okay? And he went in and he took her by the hand and the maid arose. And then notice, and the fame of this went abroad into all that land. Okay? Well, all right, we've already had two specific situations take place right here, but the account keeps going. Verse 27, and when Jesus departed from there, the fame of him went, about, went into all that land and... When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. And they say unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open. And Jesus strictly charged them, saying, See that no man know it, but they, when they departed, spread abroad, his fame and all that country. All right. Um, what you have is Jesus simply meeting human need. If that's the place that was given him, then he meets human need. If they don't make him greater than that, if they just make him a slave to their needs, then that's what he does. And not only that, but he doesn't, as we said in the last couple of classes, he doesn't try to capitalize on that. He does it because he's doing it from the glory of nature, that this nature is self-giving. That's why he's doing it. And he's walking as a man, as the the uh, representative of what, the, what all men in new birth should be, and that is simply self-giving first and foremost. There ain't no need putting him on a throne if he's not going to be self-giving. There's no need giving him official glory 
if he hasn't, I'm going to say it like this, earned the glory of nature. And this is the exact scriptures that we get in Philippians where it says people are, are arguing and fighting and, and Paul says, look not every man on the things of yourself. He says, you know, honor others and do all this stuff. And then he says, let this mind be in you. And then he describes who thought it not a thing to be grasped after, to be equal with God in the term, in terms of official glory, but humbled himself and became in the form of a man and in that form gained the glory of nature. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him official glory. I don't know if you followed what, I, what, well, what the scriptures just said. But there's a progression. There's a progression. Everybody's trying to become something through official glory. Everybody's trying to gain stature through official glory. And God is not interested in raising anybody up based on how much they can work the system, how much they can get people to honor them simply in an official way without them having any character at all. And so he comes, and so he lives, and he has nothing and no regard for being equal with God. Or, shall I say it like this, he has nothing in him or no regard for trying to gain official glory uh, there's an old, old commercial, long time ago. It used to say this. It was a wine commercial. It says, we will sell no wine before it's time. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> We're out there trying to sell our wine before it's time. <laughs> We're trying to sell our wine before it's time. We're trying to, to pawn ourselves off without the, the maturing process happening in, in the vessel <clears throat> and uh, trying to gain it simply because I partner up with, uh, well, I go, I'm, I'm in the pastor's association and so people will honor me, you know, and I will, you know, da-da-da-da, and I'll get this reputation. If I write a book, then I'll, I'll be known for my book. And, and, and I'm telling you, I know ministers that have written books simply so that that would give them esteem. You've actually met some of them. <laughs> And I'm telling you that it had nothing to do with anything except raising their official glory level to severe. <laughs> so, well, I guess that's the terrorist level, sorry. <clears throat> I get those mixed up sometimes. <clears throat> and so we are literally, literally uh, starting our business, filling our vats with wine that is not matured and running out there and trying to sell it and trying to get everybody to buy it. And the truth is, if they took one sip of the true nature of where we're at, they'd spit it out and go, this wine is not ready. <laughs> it's not ready. It, does, it doesn't taste ready. It's, it, something's wrong. Well, if you put a gold label on it, uh, put a snappy saying under the bottle lid or something, <laughs> the cork, or do something to, to get, you know, uh, and then ha get it sold in the best stores, you see, and network the thing. Forget Jesus doing, not doing that and finding that as repulsive because it's not the way of God. The Father looks at all of that and he just, it's just an abomination to him. Because it is uh, clearly 
the way of man. It is clearly flesh. It is clearly using the principles of the world. You can call it business principles or whatever you want. But it's the opposite or, or, or it is just not like what the ways of the Lord are. <clears throat> and so Jesus again, and remember these aren't the same scriptures we've read last time where he said don't tell anybody. Because, you know, and we say, well, he's being humble, but he's really glad, really, that they're saying it, even though he told them not to, you know. No, he's not. No, he's not. He gave up official glory and came down here. He gave up. He said, I don't need that. I don't need angels bowing down. I don't need, you know, everybody's saying, hail to the Son of God or whatever. I need to become a man and live this in a manner that would glorify God and represent what this new mankind is all about. So again, <clears throat> he says, don't tell anybody. And uh, verse 30, but, but their eyes were open and Jesus strictly charged them saying, see that no man know it. <clears throat> That's an interesting sentence there. It's, it's not even two sentences. It's one sentence. But their eyes were opened. I mean, finish that in modern day Christianity if some evangelist did that. Finish that sentence in the vernacular of, of how it would be spoken today. And their eyes were opened. And they all ran around the room and said, Glory to God, God is in you. And, you know, and just carrying on. And, oh, you're really a man of God. And their eyes were open, and then Jesus strictly charged them, saying, don't tell anybody. <coughs> okay, why? There's an there's a old, older saying that says virtue is its own reward. <laughs> I know that doesn't apply to too many people today. They can't be satisfied with just being good or right or what, whatever terms you want to apply to virtue there. See? Lord's not pleased with it either. <laughs> they, they have to have follow-up. If, then. If I've done this, then this should happen. Now that is strictly, strictly glory of nature, but it's not glory of nature. It's glory of action to reach official glory because glory of nature is the Lamb, is Christ, is self-giving, is selfless in its approach to you and I. And so, you know, there is no then. There's just, there, there's no if. There's no if or then. It's just, I will. You know, will you heal me, Lord? I will. Will you help me, Lord? I will. Because it's who he is, and he's trying to manifest not just the way man will be, but it is certainly that, but the kind of man that Jesus was introducing in himself being the firstborn or uh, the, uh, at that point, the only one of this kind, but in the resurrection there would be many more. He is representing a man who will allow God to be the life. To be the life. Well, that's, that's kenosis. That's true kenosis. It's not giving up something. It's, it's you know, ceasing to be. There I go again. That was the statement I made that got me off on that to be or not to be. Ceasing to be, not just ceasing to do or ceasing to exist, but ceasing to be. The depth of that runs so much deeper than stopping doing things. It runs so much de deeper than ceasing to exist by suicide or dying. To not be 
is to mean that you allow the, be, uh, the being of God to exist in place of us. It is to cease to be so that in him, in union with him we live, in union with him we move, in union with him we have our being. And we have no being apart from that. We're not working a little being. We're not working a little, you know. I mean, you heard it. Somebody said to me, and I probably told you this recently, but it was fairly recent when they said it. Well, you know, you should stand up for yourself. You should do something. I mean, all this junk that's been written about you on the web, you know, is, does that, is that the way you want to be remembered? You're, you know, 60 years old now. Is that the way you want to be remembered? And I said, I don't want to be remembered. I would like the Lord to be seen and known and be so real that when I'm gone, someone would say, it was the Lord. You know? Now, whether that happens or not, I don't know. But that's what I desire. <laughs> That is my joy. That's, that's the greatest joy. So, <clears throat> just this whole thing of uh, Jesus approaching everything the opposite of us. Again, our being, working on our being, working on our... I mean, folks, <clears throat> do you know what it, what it is? Let's say MySpace, I guess that's the name of the website. Do you know what MySpace basically is? It's a workshop from, for improving your being or your official glory. No, oh, it is. Now, maybe everybody doesn't do that, but I'd say a huge portion of them do. I mean, do you, most people would put their best picture up. Why? Because that's the way you'll be perceived, you know. Um, you put all of the things you like and stuff, you know. You don't say, well, you know, I don't like Japanese people. Or I, I just can't stand to be around, you know, da-da-da-da. You, know, you don't go into usually all that stuff. It's all the good stuff about you. <laughs> And of course, the list of friends, my God, is that the most ridiculous, ridiculous, and ridiculous thing you ever heard? Because most of those people will turn on you and a hair breath give him the right opportunity. And, and, and they're not your friends anyway. Most people only have, at best, a couple of friends, true friends. You know, I mean, a couple of true friends. You could have just a couple of friends listed on there. You would look bad. Now, if you're on MySpace and you have your best picture, forgive me, but I'm not talking about you. I'm, all, I'm only talking about all those other people who are seeking for official glory. That's all I'm talking about. So I know that doesn't apply to you. <clears throat> but I'm, uh, you know, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm shooting straight, yeah. I'm telling you, absolutely, folks. Uh, you can put forth a persona on those websites that isn't even you. You know? little Photoshop work, you can change the color of your hair. If your hairline's receding, you could fix that a little bit. A little contrast and you'll glow. <laughs> sure. And, and you better believe that some people have used other people's pictures. Um, <clears throat> 
because I've heard about it. I've heard about women who got into a relationship, a relationship, they're emailing back and forth. But I mean, oh, it's a real relationship. When they finally meet, she goes, that's not you. Well, I just needed to tell you that. Well, you know, you're, you don't look anything like Brad Pitt. You're a dork, dork boy or something, you know, whatever. <clears throat> Why would they do that? Because you want to improve your official glory, and my God, you can do it on a worldwide level. How much do you think God would take that into consideration in evaluating you, your being? <laughs> I mean, do you? And I say, sure he will, because it's a manifestation of what's already true in us. And it's popular because it's a manifestation of what's true in Adam. Can I get amen? It's a simple manifestation of the world, the flesh, and the devil. <laughs> Lust of the eyes. Pride of life, all that, it's just, it's just the, the lifelong pursuit of official glory. Well, no need, you know, as Cassie said on Sunday morning when Ben was preaching, no need beating a dead donkey. <laughs> he said, I guess I've spent too long on this and let's move on. <laughs> But I think there's value in laying out actual practical ways in which we are in violation of the Lamb of God. I think there's practical. I think that we will never pursue the Lord unless we see how self-focused we are and how bent on... Um, um, getting official glory we are, and how wounded we are, and I know from experience, maybe more than all of you, when that reputation wasn't given up to the Lord. Making yourself of no reputation. So then God allows it to be ripped off, and then you see what the heck you got working in you. You just go, oh God. Scott? I was, I was just thinking about how sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll reject the, uh, the glory of nature if it doesn't benefit us too. You know, just if, or maybe if it exposes us, you know, like with, with Jesus when he would, you know, heal the sick or when just by nature he would do something. A lot of times the Pharisees were very offended by that because it actually made their official glory look less absolutely absolutely it, it downplayed their official glory now let me you know since you said that let me make a comment on that and that is a lot of times the kind of people that we will relate to and fellowship with or spend time with or allow to hang out with or whatever are people that will enhance our official glory you know you, you only hang out with ugly people so you look good. Is that possible somebody do that? Is it possible that somebody would have nothing but bridesmaids that were not near as pretty as them, even though they're not close, just so the bride would look better? You know, God help. Don't, I, you speak, because I need to stop right here. <laughs> or even now that because you've had time with them you've learned to understand them but you you apologize for them so you don't look as bad for being friends with them yeah yeah i mean you know it, it's i think it's valuable for us to examine these things this isn't to this isn't to tear us down or whatever we should have our uh, 
view of ourself be based on Christ? Should we not? Be based on Christ. I mean, we're, we're dead. <laughs> and he's our life. Well, great doctrine. But wait till you see what I've written about myself on MySpace or whatever. I, you know, Facebook, or I, you know, I don't even know what they are. You know, I can't even get on the web. I mean, if I just went to the computer in someone's house and brought it up, gunshots come out of it, and I don't even have to be on a specific site. It doesn't matter where I go. If I go to Google without calling anything up, <laughs> <clears throat> and you know, and the whole world is linked up and to the web and you're out of it if, if you're not but the real world is right here <laughs> the real world is right here. I mean this is the real world and a whole lot of people can't don't do too good they don't socialize too well in person they don't get along with people but they can do this and everybody goes Ooh, you know I mean, I, was just, I just flashed at a picture in my high school reunion when I went. They give you these little badges, you know, and it has your name and all this kind of stuff. And they put a picture of you from high school. Well, I knew they were going to do that in advance, so I, I got a picture of a guy that if I showed you the picture, you'd go, oh, my God, and glasses and large and stuff. And I put it in there, you know. And just, you know, you just want to see what, what people really remember, you know. And, you know, a few people walked up and went, that ain't what you look like or something, you know? Well, you know, it's, I know people who came to that reunion who flaunted that they came in a limo and they probably had to mortgage their house to come in it. We're all dressed up. What are you doing for a living? Anybody ever see that? There was some movie about that, and they and, and the girl said, "Well, I invented what was a sticky <laughs> post-it." Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, no, you know, because they didn't want to look like it. Well, what have you done? Well, not much, you know. I'm just, I don't know how I got off on all this, but, but it, what it all is, is a, it is a practical application to our lives. <clears throat> and it is things that we worry about and we find angle with, and I don't know, you know, I, I, really, I really like that person, and I really, you know, said something stupid in front of them, and so, I, you know, you just worry for days. You ever seen that one before? Somebody they say it and then they go, God, I'm stupid. You know? <laughs> All right. So um, these situations and these scriptures, we went through about three different scenarios, right in a row, where when Jesus gets in that situation, he is not going to capitalize on the glory of nature. He's not going to use the glory of nature to enhance his official glory. Now, if God glorifies him on that level, okay. If, if others do it, okay. But I think Jesus can tell who will and who won't. Who's going to go out and give him official glory because of their, you know, not really because they've recognized his character but because he did something nobody else could do. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's, I think that's a big deal to Jesus. I think he can tell. Because there were some people he didn't stop from saying anything. But many of them he did because he knew they did not perceive him. You know? I mean, every one of us know this on a little level. Nothing to be compared with Jesus. But, you know... When you were dating, did you ever date somebody and, and uh, you, 
you know, you had certain talents or whatever, maybe, you know, like Mallory played the flute or something like that, or you, you did this or something like that. And so, you know, people go, oh, oh and, and they, they didn't know you, but they would just talk about how well you played an instrument or this or that or whatever. And the more you were around them, the more you realized they don't even know me, you know? They're speaking so highly of me, and I could choke them right now, you know? Or, or you get your feelings hurt, you're out on a date and everything, and you realize that this person doesn't know me, they're not really even interested in me. This, I'm sure this happens with girls all the time, you know. They're interested in something else, they're not. They don't want to know me, they don't care about me, you know. I believe when Jesus said to his disciples, who do men say that I am? I don't believe he was going through a hard time. I don't believe he was going through some sort of uh, image crisis, you know. I think that he cared that people would know him. And what was the response? Oh, some say you're this, and some say, some say you're a prophet, and some say you're this, and some say you're that. Right? Remember? And Jesus went, all right, official glory. I mean, prophet, that's getting me up there. I'm working up the ladder here. He didn't, no, he seemed totally unmoved until Peter said, but I think you're the son of the living God. And he just rejoiced and said, flesh and blood has not shown that to you. But my father, because he's beginning to comprehend on a spiritual level instead of a, an outward level and things like that. <coughs> and... Okay, so um, let's, we're, we're close. Matthew chapter 8. And um, let's start at verse 23. Let's look at another story here. And we, we discussed this one last week, but point out a few things here. Verse 23, and when he was entered into a boat, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the wind, winds and the sea obey him? Um, <clears throat> remember, we're, I guess, for those of you writing down titles, uh, uh, Jesus took the place that he was given. Um, <clears throat> we've had all these stories of people looking to Jesus, coming to Jesus, reaching out to Jesus. And so the disciples, they, they turn to him also. They come to him also. And uh, they bring their sorrows and they bring their fears. And, uh, and Jesus relieves them, doesn't he? But there's something different here. He also rebukes them. He rebukes them, all right? Now, there were others that Jesus said something about being of little faith, but he didn't really rebuke them. He tenderly cared for them. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is the disciples looked at Jesus differently than most people did. They looked at him as master. Amen? Their teacher, their Lord, their, that's how they related. And Jesus related back to them. He took the place that, that was given to him. And in this case, he was given more place, more honor, more ability to speak, not just to heal or not just to stop the waves and wind, but then to address them on a deeper level. You see? All right, now let's um, let's put that on a on a personal basis. 
And we'll, you know, maybe I shouldn't do that yet because I want to get into all that when we start talking about Jesus entering the homes and sitting at different tables with people uh, and, and this interchange that happens. But it's going to be the same thing that we're discussing here. Um, so maybe I should just try to read some notes here. Um, this is because he, he is honored by disciples as master. He calls them of little faith. Yet others had little faith and were not rebuked. They held different relation to him, disciples or strangers. He took the place they gave him. They may have been disciples that resented this treatment and unfairness. The rich young ruler came to Jesus as a disciple to a master. And Jesus said, okay, if you're going to come, you know, because... There were a lot of people that came to Jesus for healing or food or this or that or whatever, and he just blessed them, didn't he? With no questions asked. Now, don't you think there needs to be a method to this madness? Don't you think that there needs to be some sort of understanding why Jesus in many cases put nothing on them and expected nothing back, but in other cases... He seemed to deal more harshly, but the harshness is not harshness. It is the place of a master, of a teacher, of a rabbi to them. And so we approach the Gospels in a whole new light. We approach the Gospels in perceiving how Jesus relates and how he adjusts to everything around him. And we'll be giving exam other examples in other classes where Jesus went into a situation under one thing where it was seemed to be high official glory and they turned against him in the process and he dropped right back down. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And the thing to catch is not just this teaching, which is important to move on, but the thing to catch from this is how it applies in our life. How do we put that on for us? And the way that we put that on is if somebody gives us official glory and then they cut back, we get upset. And if, and, and if we don't understand this, we go and rebuke somebody that doesn't look at us as a rabbi. You understand what I'm saying, I hope. As a teacher, as a master. And we're totally crossing lines there, you say, well, no, 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 da, 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 da. We're not talking about lines of authority in the sense of what most people are thinking. You do understand that, don't you? We're talking about glory of nature or official glory. I mean, I've been in many a situation with people in different you know, we go to Mardi Gras, we go here, we go, and it's different people are in charge. And even though I have the oversight, that's sort of when needed. <laughs> and if the whole trip I'm not needed, then I'm just one of the gang. And someone may treat me like that doesn't hurt my feelings. Kind of nice to be a sheep for a while instead of a shepherd. Feels good, you know? Yes? A little louder because this, this thing's on. You can't even hear it. Really. The, uh, sharing that, how they could receive a lot of the Lord's uh, provision when they were humble. Yeah. 
Yes, but you know, the interesting thing that I, I'm getting is, is that Jesus really wasn't trying to work him. So he just adjusted. He wasn't trying to instruct everybody in the fullness of who he was. I mean, think about it. Because isn't that a little bit uh, self-centered or whatever, where you're actually working everybody to bring them to the knowledge that you're a great person? It's getting more. But your, but Jesus continually gave me the feeling that that was not what he was doing. I think we lost. Is he on mute? What's that? Is Bob on mute? Oh, okay. yeah, sorry. I've got him having this horrible squeal. Can you hear that? Can you hear him? There are, there's a lot of different things that work into this. So, you know, you can't, I, I can't say, no, that doesn't apply, and you, you know. I mean, there are. There's a lot of things that work into this. I'm, I'm trying to hit on one primary thing because that's the theme of what the Lord gave me for this semester. There are angles of this, of Jesus walking as a sacrifice, one of the sacrifices, fulfilling all of that. For example, I mean, the, the, we just mentioned the rich young ruler and Jesus didn't seem to cut him any slack or whatever. Uh, just, that, just that aspect of, for example, the, if the Passover, the Passover says and, and the, the uh, unleavened bread that's had during the season of Passover, God clearly instructs show bread, Passover, he, he says, no leaven. Okay? Okay. And so we take that to heart and we say, okay. You know, in one place it talks about leaven being sin and whatever. We take that to heart and we say, then I'm going to get all of the sin out of this bread that I can. Okay? You, you, you follow me? But you know, it's interesting, like in that showbread and stuff, God said, don't add any honey to it. Don't add natural sweeteners. We work so hard to get rid of the sin, but we're adding our sweetness into this offering all the time. We're calling it Jesus, but it's our honey that we're adding in. You see? And it's not Jesus, because in certain situations, Jesus is approached like the rich young ruler as master, and as master, he needs to instruct that guy. Yes. I thought I saw something. something. You know, I know it's a question that I had. You know, how do you share the gospel? How do you share the Lord? How do you share this Jesus that we're known as life? Um, you know, you, you come into contact with people who just are not interested and they are satisfied with the Jesus that they have and know. They might come to you for a little prayer or a little this or a little that, but, but and, it, and it's real tempting to start talking scriptures and talking this and talking that, but, but that is stuff that I know 
Well, you know, the scripture says to avoid foolish questions and arguments and this and that. And um, on what basis would that be? Well, usually an argument comes when two people know more than each other. <laughs> well said, just not very well said. <clears throat> they both think they know more than the other. And, and, I, and I'll, just, I'll tell you flat out, among deeper life people, among people who, who claim to know the message of Christ and Him crucified, there tends to be an attitude that we've got the truth and nobody else does and so we are really needed. We're important. We've, you know, our job is to tell everyone else that they're stupid. Okay. Well, no, 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 and no, no. <laughs> Our job is to live Christ, yes. I mean, I really agree with that. But how would we say that? Because we're so full of knowledge that we think we do know him, but we, we know knowledge. We don't know him. No, there's not. And, and, and I got three hands, so I'll try to get to all of you. But there is that thing where you can take the lower seat and believe it or not, by doing that, by, by um, okay, let's, let's put it on another basis. You can become kenosis in all of those situations. And in so doing, you are not only glorifying God, you are representing him in a perfect, beautiful way, and there is some sort of faith that in death comes life. In kenosis would come, uh, in suffering, reigning would come, and all of that. And so, if we really believe this, you know, I mean, I've been in situations where I was unrespected for years and years and years and just didn't try to push my way. Now, I know I got plenty of other problems, but I can tell you at least one where I did good. You know, and just didn't, and just didn't, and said, you know what, this is up to the Lord. My, I'm just going to enjoy loving these people. <laughs> and I'm going to give to them, and, and guess what? They will take advantage of that. And once you put yourself in that place, they'll say, well, I'm greater than you, and you know it. Do you understand? Well, it doesn't bother Jesus. He gave that up. But interestingly enough, with time, <laughs> things changed. But it had to be the Lord, because not even, let's say if they all preach and you preach, you, don't think that your preaching is going to impress people, especially people like that. It's not. It's not. But the Lord will impress people. And, and again, when it's all said and done, it's, it's not, it, we're not going to walk in with this big box full of official glory that we gained on earth, set it before God, and he's going to go, oh, your box is so big, and just be impressed. He's going to look at you. <laughs> All right, I had three hands up, and I think that you were first. Do you remember what you were going to say? Yes. What I was going to say was, whenever, whenever I was walking up and down the street, I remember what you used to, I pull up your beautiful phone and say, you either I'm going to say yes, and say, I know somebody else is going to pray for you. And they said, what do you mean? I said, I just want to pray for you if you need anything from the Lord. So I go about crazy way, crazy way. Crazy as I go about, you know, they don't accept me for who I am. That's what the Lord works through me. That's how I do it. My witnessing to the Lord. Because I've been on the old oh, psychiatric terminology that, oh, he's going to go crazy on me. I said, you know, so, and then they kind of shed away, but then they come back to me and let him just see the thank you for praying for me. So it's not me that does it, the Lord that does it through me. That's what I said. There's a way that you can do it that, you know, without, you, it's, you know, going through the back door, to, just to go straight through the front door of the heart. Go through the back door of the life, and then look at those emails. I'm in this position, they're in that position, so that's my brother, 
like you barely hit very much. And then they, they won't have questions at all if you've been crazy. Like, well, he was crazy, you know, show the gospel to me. He did the best of the Lord for it because he was crazy for us. Yeah, I've seen you do that. I mean, when you first started coming to this church, the way you were just talking down, your voice tone and everything, and the clarity and the calmness, like a, everybody else. When you first came, you talked real goofy and, you know, like there was, you know, whatever. And a couple of weeks into that, do you remember this? I stopped you and I said, Steve, you're not a dummy. You're a smart guy. I don't want you talking like that anymore. Talk the way you normally would to me. Let's, I respect you and you respect me. Let's just be brothers. <laughs> you totally changed. Do you remember that? And, and I knew, and that's a, that's a form of recognizing the life in you and saying, come out. <coughs> well, that's it. It is, it is the life of the Lord. I'm trying to get this truth. Yeah, I will abridge it. <clears throat> if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. If I know what Christ in you means, and, and if I understand and see the Lord in the Word, and if I see all of these things and have all of this wonderful knowledge and even have faith that can move mountains, but if I don't have love, then I am nothing. And, and love is more related to nature than knowledge. Amen? Yeah, I was just going to say another thing. It's like I, I see people who are living by, they know the Lord, and they're living this life without all of the head knowledge of it. And I'm not saying that, that having head knowledge of it is a bad thing, but what I'm saying is I see people like that, and they're not seen, and they're content with the Lord, and they serve, and they're overlooked. And it's like, man, and it's like when you finally start to recognize the Lord, you're like, ooh, and you want to be around those people, and you, and you just want to share that life with them, you know? That's where Martha came from, that everybody knows and comes at the conference. She was one of those, and I saw she served in that manner and in that spirit. Scott, you got the final word for to, on this session. <clears throat> All right. I, I just um, was thinking about, you know, the just how things have gotten twisted around just even in our government, you know, because in... Uh, when our country started off, you know, the government of our country, they were not, I mean, they were basically putting their lives on the line to be the government of the country. I mean, there was nothing in it for them at all except maybe getting hanged by the, by the British. And, uh, I mean, they, they, were truly, they were truly servants of the people. And, you know, you look now and, and the people who are in charge and in the, over the government now they want all the official glory, but they, they've made the people their servants. And, uh, you know, it's like, well, you know, you, I want this pension, and I want this huge salary, and I want all this stuff, and I'm not really going to listen to what you have to say to me. You know, I'm just going to do what I think is, is best. And, and it, you know, it's just totally and completely, I mean, there's everything in it for them. And, you know, they're not, they're not they call themselves public servants. But there's no public service there whatsoever. It's all self-service. All right. Let's break and we'll come back shortly. <laughs>